Well, this is certainly a surprise and a pleasant one at that. I would say that three to four years ago, we had effectively no good ultra wide angle lenses available for Sony APS-C, and now we are really spoiled for choice. And this new lens from Sigma, the new 10 to 18 DCDN, is going to make that choice that much harder. Let's check it out. This is the new 10 to 18 millimeter DCDN, and it is a charming little addition to the established and excellent 18 to 50 millimeter f2.8, of which I am a big fan. And although this little new lens is a surprise, now I am beginning to think that this is part of Sigma's grand plan to put together another trio of APS-C lenses, this time zooms. And I imagine the next one has to be something like a 50 to 150 f2.8, which would be incredible. Back to the 10 to 18, it comes in a white box, similar packaging that we see with all Sigma lenses. There's a manual, plastic front and rear lens caps, and a lens hood. This lens hood, however, is different. Normally you have a lens hood that rotates and locks into place. This has been the same for decades, but this new 10 to 18 has a 67 millimeter filter diameter. And since the 18 to 50 has a 55 millimeter diameter, putting a regular lens hood on this new lens would make it considerably wider. So instead this lens hood just clips on with a spring and lever mechanism. To remove it, you twist slightly. The result of this is the lens hood is significantly slimmer, making the overall package that much smaller. And I'll be honest, in the beginning, I hated this lens hood because I couldn't figure out how to put it on this lens. It took me all of 10 minutes and then I finally broke down and took out the user manual and figured it out. But now that I've played with it a couple of times, it's not that bad. The only thing that I worry about is accidentally bumping it off, which we'll see how it does. Starting at the rear, this lens has an all metal mount with electronic connections. There is a rubber gasket here for weather sealing, although I don't think that the rest of the lens is sealed. 023 here indicates it is a 2023 model, minimum focus distance of 0.116 meters or 0.381 feet, which is very close, and this lens is made in Japan. There's a manual focus ring here, it's electronic, so it rotates infinitely in either direction, but it is smooth with a little bit of resistance. Lens specs are here, Sigma logo, Contemporary C logo, and then we get to the zoom ring. This ring is well done. It feels very similar to the one on the 18 to 50 in terms of resistance and smoothness, so I have no complaints. The barrel of this 10 to 18 does extend a little bit as you zoom all the way out to 10 millimeters, but still, it's a very compact ultra wide zoom lens. Around the front, there is a medium sized front lens element and some faint lens specs, again, 67 millimeter filter thread and made in Japan. As far as weight, this new ultra wide is 270 grams, which is even lighter than the already very light 310 grams of the 18 to 50. Inside, there are 13 elements in 10 groups, a seven rounded blade diaphragm, and a stepper motor that is compatible with high speed autofocus. And Sigma says a design that minimizes flaring and ghosting. Mounted on my Sony a6700, what a combination. It's super compact, it's balanced, the colors and the design of this new lens pairs nicely with any APS-C camera body. And this is specifically for APS-C cameras as with a full frame camera, this is what you get at 10 millimeters and here's what you get at 18 millimeters. But let's see what this lens is capable of on my A6700. I took these out and I took a couple of random shots and well, what can I say? Image quality looks excellent. The majority of these shots are done wide open at f2.8 to try to expose flaws, and there are very few of those. Colors and contrast is excellent wide open. In terms of sharpness, I compared this new Sigma to the very sharp, excellent Sony 11mm f1.8 at f2.8, and honestly, there is no real difference between the two in terms of sharpness. This new Sigma might even be a little bit sharper in the corners. The Sony 11 does have slightly brighter corners, however. What about comparing it to the 18 to 50 millimeter Sigma at 18 millimeter? Well, similar story there as both perform about the same, but there is a noticeable improvement in chromatic aberration with this new lens, which is a big plus. So from a sharpness perspective, I would describe its performance as excellent and I would put it up there with the best of the best in terms of ultra wide angle APS-C lenses. And if you look at distortions, this lens does very well. Chromatic aberration is well controlled, very well controlled for an ultra wide angle lens. It's clear that Sigma is paying attention to this and the coatings and the elements that they are using make a difference. Flaring performance is also excellent with very little ghosting, no crazy colors that distract from the scene. Now, 
Normally, an ultra-wide angle lens struggles with this, but this one doesn't. There is a slight loss of contrast as you get close to the source of light, so the sun in this case, but it does gradually resolve itself and the majority of the image is not affected. The same thing goes for vignetting and barrel distortion, which I would say are not issues with this lens. In fact, using this lens out for interior shots was simply excellent. It makes spaces seem massive and it encompasses so much of your environment it makes for a fun shooting experience. If you shoot architecture, you'll love a lens like this. If you do real estate, same thing. This is a great little option to capture those types of photos. And there are more things to consider still because if you shoot at night, this lens is significantly better than something like Sony's 10 to 20 PZ. Now that one I owned for a little bit of time, but I ended up selling it because I found that it was simply too dark for what I'm used to. I'm used to shooting f1.4 and f1.8 all the time. So an f2.8 zoom on an APS-C camera I'm fine with, but as you get to f4, at least on APS-C, it gets a little bit dark. Full frame, it's a different story. But anyway, let's get back to this 10 to 18. The fact that it is an f2.8 makes it versatile in lighting conditions that aren't perfect, but there's still a lot more to consider with this lens. First is the autofocus performance. It is excellent. There wasn't a moment during the last five days that I've had it that I thought something was up. It never failed me or let me down. Tracking performance is as good as any other native Sony that I have. That means the eye tracking, subject recognition, all of it works flawlessly. Then in terms of focus breathing, there's almost none of it. It's a great wide angle lens for video capture because of this. And as great as this lens is for architecture and real estate, I think that it's also going to be equally great for vlogging or what we call content creation nowadays. And that's because this lens is plenty wide enough to hold in front of you and capture yourself and your environment. And specifically with newer camera bodies that have active stabilization with a slight crop, having an ultra wide lens like this is a huge Plus, just look at the difference in the field of view that you get with active stabilization off and with it on at 10 millimeters. So nowadays, the way I see it, you have about five great options when it comes to ultra wide angle lenses for APS-C. Number one is the Sony 10 to 20 PZ that I mentioned already. It's an F4, but otherwise it's an excellent lens. Number two, we have the Sony 11 millimeter, probably my favorite Sony lens release in the last five years, but it's a prime. You can't zoom in and it it does distort people if you get too close. Number three is the Tamron 11 to 20 f 2.8. It's also a great lens, but it's bigger and the build feels just a little bit cheaper. Number four is the Laowa 9 millimeter f 2.8 D, an excellent lens, but it's all manual. And number five, we have this new 10 to 18. That is according to Sigma, the smallest ultra wide f 2.8 zoom lens available for APS-C. But beyond the size, the performance is excellent. It gives you a slightly wider field of view than the Tamron or something like the Tokina 11 to 18 millimeter. The autofocus performance is excellent. There's really a lot to like. For me personally, it's between this new Sigma 10 to 18 millimeter and the Sony 11 millimeter f 1.8. Two very similar lenses in terms of size and weight, but they are a little bit different. There's something special about the Sony 11 millimeter, that super bright f 1.8 aperture. I just don't think I could ever let that lens go. However, the Sigma lens is by far way more usable and more versatile because sometimes the 11 millimeter is simply too wide to film yourself for a variety of shots. And then we have to talk about price because I think that was the biggest problem with the Sony 10 to 20 when it came out. The price was $850 or 829, I forget. And since then, Sony has dropped it to, I think it's 750 nowadays. This Sigma 10 to 18, which is an F 2.8 instead of an F 4, Autofocus, about as compact, comes in at $599 US. And that's the thing that keeps bringing me back to Sigma lenses, the value that you get. The performance per dollar spent is unmatched by anyone else. So I like this lens. You'll likely be seeing more of it on this channel in the future. And as far as negatives, the only one that I really had was the lens hood. But I spent the last few days shooting with this lens and the lens hood stayed put. It never fell off on accident. I never bumped it on accident, really, unless you're trying to pull this lens off of your camera by the lens hood. Even then it stays on sometimes, but that's the only situation in which I think that it would be a little annoying. But I would say it's not a big deal. And as much as I hated it in the beginning, once I've gotten used to how it mounts and how to remove it, 
I don't have any complaints about it. But let me know what you guys think about this new release from Sigma down in the comment section below. What is your favorite ultra wide angle lens for a PSC camera? I was always curious to read your guys' comments. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day. Bye-bye.